Hi friends, today we will see something interesting that is about mixture of venous blood gas. Actually this is not a mixture of arterial venous blood, this is something else. Let's see what is it, why it is measuring and how do we use this information in clinical practice. So let's begin. First thing, what is it? The mixture of venous oxygen saturation is the percentage of oxygen bound to the hemoglobin in blood which is returning to the right side of the heart. This reflects the amount of oxygen left over there after the tissues remove what they need. Let's make it more clear. Look at the slide here. Mixed venous oxygen saturation or SVO2 is the percentage of oxygen bound to hemoglobin in blood returning to the right side of the heart. This reflects the amount of oxygen left over after the tissues remove what they need. It is used to help us to recognize when a patient's body is extracting more oxygen than normally. An increase in extraction is the body's way to meet tissue oxygen needs when the amount of oxygen reaching the tissues is less than needed. From where it is collected, a true mixed venous sample is drawn from the deep of the pulmonary artery catheter or the Swan-Ganz catheter. Why? Because the distal part of the pulmonary artery will have the mixture of blood from superior vena cava, inferior vena cava and coronary sinus. So this mixture of venous blood will reflect the average amount of oxygen left over there after the all body, all, all tissues in the body have removed oxygen from the hemoglobin. This sample should be collected before it is re-oxygenated in the pulmonary capillaries. Sometimes people are using uh, internal jugular CVP line for taking the sample because it is going through the superior vena cava till the opening of the right atrium. So we can have an average idea about the mixed venous oxygen saturation. Then what does it tell us? This will help us to determine whether the cardiac output and oxygen delivery is good enough to meet the patient needs. It can be very useful to measure before and after uh, the changes have been made for the cardiac medications or the mechanical ventilation, especially in unstable patients. And the normal value of mixture venous oxygen saturation is 60 to 80 percent. Next, what is the use of this information in clinical practice? Or how do we use this information? We know that energy is needed for our cell function and survival. Tissues need oxygen for making ATPs or energy. If the amount of oxygen is being received by the tissues uh, falls below the requirement, our body will try to compensate that. How? Just see the slides. First to compensation, cardiac output increases. The cardiac output is increased in an effort to increase the amount of oxygen being delivered to the tissues as shown below. Oxygen delivery is the amount of oxygen is being sent to the tissues and it is determined by the following. Uh, oxygen delivery DO2 is equal to cardiac output is uh, heart rate times stroke volume multiply with the oxygen content it is uh, hemoglobin times uh, oxygen saturation if this is not sufficient to meet the tissue energy needs we move to our second compensation second compensation tissue oxygen extraction increases tissue begins to remove or extract a higher percentage of oxygen from the arterial blood this results in a reduced amount of oxygen remaining in the blood as it returns to the right side of the heart. Decreased SVO2, that means decreased uh, mixed venous oxygen saturation. If this is not sufficient to meet tissue energy needs, we move to our third compensation. Third compensation, anaerobic metabolism increases. If the tissue fails to receive an adequate supply of oxygen, anaerobic metabolism becomes the only mechanism to produce tissue ATP. Anaerobic metabolism is uh, inefficient and producing a large amount of metabolic waste, that is lactic acid, that is difficult for the body to eliminate quickly. It is also produces a relatively poor supply of ATP and prolonged anaerobic metabolism leads to energy depletion and metabolic acidosis. Now we will see why we are measuring it. First one, if the mixed venous oxygen saturation is decreasing, that means the tissues are extracting higher percentage of oxygen from the blood than the normal. In other words, if the mixture venous oxygen percentage is decreasing, that means the cardiac output is not enough to make good tissue perfusion. Thus, we can understand the cardiac output status of the patient and look for it improving the cardiac output. Second thing, a price in mixture venous oxygen saturation with the presence of lactate, it is not appropriate. That means, uh, 
the tissues have started anaerobic respiration, such as that the tissues are unable to extract oxygen from the hemoglobin. Uh, this we can see in late septic shock and cyanide poison. And the third one, measuring cardiac output is just a number. The, sometimes the patient with uh, normal cardiac output value uh, is not getting adequate tissue perfusion. A uh, mixed venous oxygen saturation in the normal limit along with the normal lactate uh, is suggesting that the cardiac output is adequate. Next one. This can also be useful when evaluating a ventilator therapy, especially in unstable patients. Sometimes high PEEP is needed for improving the oxygen content, where the high PEEP is compromising the cardiac output. The best PEEP is uh, the level that improves the SpO2 without causing the mixture venous oxygen saturation fall. Finally, there are four fundamental causes for a drop in mixture venous oxygen saturation that are poor cardiac output, low hemoglobin, and low SpO2, and increased use of oxygen content than the auto delivery. I hope you enjoy my class. Thanks for watching me. And don't forget, if your subscribe button is still wet, just click on that and share with your friends. Bye-bye.